listening to Coffee and Conversation with Recovery Advocate Network, the nonprofit organization that strives to address the staggering disparity in resource availability for individuals suffering from mental health disorders, processing disorders, addictions, trauma healing, and sexual identity challenges. Together, we strive to end the stigma associated with these challenges so that true healing can begin. Welcome back to Coffee and Conversations Between the Lines Blog Club series. This is episode number 30, and Joshua will share his experience with what depression feels like. Between the Lines episodes are written by guests who prefer to use their written voice instead of their interview voice to share their stories. Each author has submitted a blog, and then either I, Ange, Joshua, who is our resident author, recovery advocate, suicide attempt survivor, and alcoholic in recovery, or an actor or actress will read and record it for them. As a reminder, the views expressed in any blog are the views of the author, and the purpose is to provide a safe place for the author's voice to be heard. So, what are we waiting for? Fill up your coffee, sit back, and let's get started. What does depression feel like? I'm asked this question quite often. Depression is like a relentless storm cloud that hovers over your life, casting its dark shadow on everything you see, touch, and feel. It's not something you choose. It's something that chooses you, slowly and insidiously. I want to share what it feels like as I've battled this uninvited companion for decades. It starts with a whisper, a faint voice in the back of your mind telling you that Something isn't quite right. At first, you dismiss it, thinking it's just a passing mood. But as the days turn into weeks and the weeks into months, that whisper grows louder, more persistent. It becomes a constant presence, a heavy weight on your chest that never seems to lift. Depression is like living in a world devoid of color. Everything appears in shades of gray, and even the things that used to bring you joy lose their luster. You find yourself going through the motions mechanically, as if you're watching your own life from a distance, detached and numb. It's a profound sense of emptiness that gnaws at your core. You wake up in the morning and wonder what the point of it all is. The simplest tasks, getting out of bed, brushing your teeth, putting on clothes, feel like Herculean feats. Each day is a battle against an invisible force that saps your energy and leaves you feeling defeated. Depression is the constant companion of self-doubt. It whispers in your ear, telling you that you're worthless, that you're a burden to those around you. It distorts your self-image, making you believe that you're fundamentally flawed, unlovable, and irredeemable. It's a profound sense of loneliness, even when you're surrounded by people who care about you. Depression isolates you from the world, building an impenetrable wall around your heart. You long for connection, for someone to reach out and understand. But the darkness within you makes it difficult to let anyone in. Depression is a thief that robs you of your passions and interests. Hobbies that used to bring you joy now feel like distant memories. You can't concentrate. You can't find the motivation to engage in the activities that once defined you. The things that made you feel alive now seem like distant dreams. It's a relentless voice of self-criticism that never seems to let up. It replays your past mistakes and failures on an endless loop, convincing you that you're undeserving of happiness or success. It tells you that you'll never be good enough, no matter how hard you try. 
Depression is like being stuck in a pit with no way out. You can see the world outside and you can see the people living there, but you can't reach them. It's a sense of hopelessness that wraps around you like a suffocating blanket, making it hard to imagine a future where things could be different. It's the physical pain that accompanies the emotional turmoil, a heaviness in your limbs, an ache in your heart, a knot in your stomach. It's the exhaustion that comes from constantly battling your own mind, from trying to keep the darkness at bay. Depression is like standing on the edge of a precipice, feeling the pull of the void below. It's a constant struggle to hold on, to find a reason to keep going. It's the fear that one day you might lose that battle and succumb to the darkness. But in the midst of this bleakness, there is a glimmer of hope. It's that tiny voice that tells you to keep fighting, to seek help, to reach out to those who care about you. It's the moment of clarity when you remember what it's like to feel joy, even if they're fleeting. Depression is a battle, one that I fight every day. It's a journey of ups and downs of setbacks and small victories. But I've learned that I'm not alone in this struggle. That there are people who care about me and want to help. And most importantly, I've learned that there is always hope, even in the darkest of moments. Unfortunately, I know many people who believe that depression is a made-up thing. That people use depression as an excuse to be lazy, to blame their problems on, or to simply hide behind. And it's important to address these misconceptions and attitudes surrounding depression through education, open conversations, and awareness campaigns. Changing public perception and reducing stigma are essential steps towards creating a more supportive environment for individuals struggling with depression. Encouraging empathy and understanding can also help those who dismiss depression to recognize its impact and offer support to those who need it. Doing nothing is what I refer to as shadow of neglect. A shadow of neglect highlights the idea that neglecting someone's emotional well-being, especially in the case of mental health issues like depression, can cast a long-lasting and profound shadow over their life, affecting their overall well-being and happiness. It serves as a reminder of the importance of recognizing and addressing mental health concerns, as neglecting them can lead to significant negative consequences. You just listened to episode number 30, our fourth Between the Lines episode, What Depression Feels Like by Joshua. We hope you've been encouraged or learned something from today's story. Look for another reflection by Joshua about journaling, a tool for self-awareness, coming soon. These episodes are written by guests who prefer to use their written voice instead of their interview voice to share their stories. As a reminder, the views expressed in any blog are the author's views, and the purpose is to provide a safe place for the author's voice to be heard. If you want to share your experiences or expertise, we encourage you to be a future guest by emailing us at podcast at recoveryadvocatenetwork.org or submit a blog post by emailing blog at recoveryadvocatenetwork.org. We also encourage you to comment on the episode so that we can continue to provide content that is most beneficial to the community. We are proud that every individual working with RAN does so on a 100% volunteer basis. You can support the mission by clicking the love, not like icon on our podcast and subscribing. We also hope that you will connect with us at www.recoveryadvocatenetwork.org 
where you can donate to the mission, read blog posts, and stay in the loop about upcoming events. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Recovery Advocate Network and on Twitter at Ran to Wellness. So listeners, pause what you're doing and subscribe. Follow us, give us a five-star rating and provide some feedback. And finally, most importantly, share these episodes with your friends. Never know whose hearts you will touch. Be a part of the reason someone has new hope today. If this episode was triggering to you, we encourage you to contact your support system, therapist, national and community support groups, the Global Crisis Text Line by texting 741-741 and or if in the United States, dialing 988 to reach the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. If you're in the U.S. and need additional resources such as shelter, support group resources, transportation, food, and or a safe, confidential path out of physical and or emotional domestic abuse, call 211 or visit www.211info.org for assistance. Once again, we know you're very busy and we're very grateful you took some time to listen to us today. Until next time, go fill up your coffee, sit back and relax, and we'll see you soon.